They don't buy it and keep it up. They buy it and they let it rot. I'm done. I'm not making any more political videos on this channel. So, you're gonna have to get your commentary somewhere else with less big rigs. I'm a citizen of the United States of America, and I have a concern that I'd like to think doesn't affect me, but it does. I've been doing a lot of thinking recently about housing and finances and such, and for some context, Siler City, which is where I live, which a lot of you probably already know, Siler City had a company come in and rebuild a chicken plant that had been closed for several years, one which originally had 600 jobs. Um, the new one has something to the tune of a thousand jobs. They actually had to knock down a factory across the street just to build their parking lot. So a thousand jobs suddenly come into a town where the entire population in the city limits is 6,000 something, maybe 7,000 something now. Um, but one of the things about this that bugs me is that I'm thinking about um, immigration and jobs and housing and such. And I kind of thought about when I tried to apply for a job a couple of years ago in San Francisco, um, which by the way, the parts of it I saw I did enjoy. Um, you can see a couple of pictures I took while I was there on my website, jodybruchon.com. But, uh, while I was in San Francisco, I was researching what I would do about housing in San Francisco. There, uh, <laughs> how can I put this? If you're from San Francisco for some reason and watching this, you know what I'm talking about. There's not really any housing in San Francisco. Good luck. Good luck finding a decent place to live in San Francisco, especially if you expect to do so at a rate that isn't going to empty your wallet out almost immediately and leave you with very little, even if you have a nice tech job. So San Francisco has garbage in the way of housing. It's also a highly regulated place, but that's part of the problem is that it's highly regulated. So what we see in San Francisco is the uh there's there's <laughs> the housing market screwed so you can't get a place um and i looked into why san francisco is the way it is it's this is a huge city it has a lot of people that need a lot of housing and it's growing and it need you know more housing is constantly needed but it, it's not there and so in a way Siler City is mirrored by San Francisco in that a ton of jobs came to town, but there's nowhere to put these people. The chicken plant in Siler City is actively bussing people in. Um, employees are being brought in on motor coaches. I'm not kidding. I've literally seen rows of motor coaches pull up into the parking lot of this place and I was like what's going on there finally someone told me they were bussing in the employees because they can't live here so you have a bunch of people who who just can't they can't live here because there's no housing um, I've talked to realtors about the housing market around here and there <laughs> there are waiting lists over a year out for housing in apartment complexes here. So it's not good. Um, pretty much any house that is remotely livable that goes onto the market gets sold within a month for cash at a higher price than what they put it on the market for originally. It's a mess and it does mirror what's happening in San Francisco, but it's not just happening in San Francisco and Siler City. It's happening everywhere that is even remotely growing. Housing is not being built to match demand, but I want to bring this full circle because there are greater concerns that come into it. See, it's one thing if you're just not building enough new housing 
to house all the people that need to go somewhere. And, and in Siler City right now, there actually is some amount of new housing being constructed. I saw some new, I'm not sure what they were, condos or townhomes or something being built where the old hospital was knocked down. But beyond that, um, there's not a lot being built, but wh where you run into a problem is when you already don't have enough housing being built or existing, and basically the whole market gets gutted, becomes a massive seller's market due to a lot of growth and no one doing anything about the housing side of things. But this is compounded further by another issue, and this does get into immigration, and maybe I might say something that's a little controversial, so if your fragile little ears cannot handle what I'm about to say, just shut the video off and don't watch the rest. No, I don't have a radical opinion on immigration, but here's what I do know. When your housing market has basically been gutted, and it's a giant seller's market due to no housing being built, too much demand and not enough supply, and then, it turns out that quite a few of the properties that are being purchased in that housing market are being purchased by foreign nationals who are not going to live there, but rather are Chinese people with hot money from China that are trying to buy up properties and, uh, in a way, citizenship. Somewhere to go, basically, when China screws them. Uh, <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? It's a bigger problem, obviously. It's a bigger problem in uh, San Francisco than it is in Siler City. But it's still a problem in both places, regardless of how you cut it. So, because you have these uh, this influx of Chinese purchasers um, that are trying to basically set up to get out... Um, it exacerbates an already serious problem in the United States and several other countries, really, where there's not enough housing for the exploding population and the growth of the economy that stems from that. You know, you have San Francisco, um, but you have Siler City, too. There, the industries grow, there's not enough housing, but then you have foreign nationals buying up what housing there is. And to compound the problem further, these foreign nationals that buy up this property, do not buy the property up and then rent it to anyone. They buy the property up and then leave it. They don't buy it and keep it up. They buy it and they let it rot. Because it doesn't matter. All they need is an anchor. All they need is somewhere to go if China becomes too troublesome. And that's where things get really sticky, is that you've got people buying stuff up so they can bail, but they're not actually living there and they're not letting anyone else live there. So when these houses get bought up by these foreign nationals, they're gone. That You don't get to live there. No one gets to actually live in these houses anymore. So they're permanently off the market. And these people have no shortage of money because, you know, China basically is a giant slave labor place. Um, they, they have no shortage of money and no shortage of ways to get their hands on money that, you know, is obtained somewhat questionably in many cases. Um, and they buy up properties and permanently take them off the market, both in terms of property, but also in terms of just being able to house people that need to actually live there. So, I see two storm fronts hitting each other, and it really bothers me. Um, compound that with several things I've learned about financial markets and money in general. Um, there are some very disturbing, very disturbing things about the way that money basically is used to control us, but I won't go into it here. The bottom line for today's little thought is that we have growth, we have a need for housing and a lack of housing, and we have people who do not live in the country buying up all the housing and taking it off the market and not making it available as housing. They're not landlords or anything. And something somewhere has to give. Because the truth of the matter is, people are not 
people aren't going to stop having babies, and people aren't going to stop immigrating to the U.S. in massive numbers. So, the population's not going away. And they have to live somewhere. And you have other people who are taking properties off the market that are needed for those people to live in those somewheres where all the growth is happening. Um, it, it's one of the reasons that a lot of people... There might be a place that's booming, but then people are just broke. They're, they're poor and broke. And they should not be. That Why are they poor and broke? And when you think about it... This kind of ties into another video that I did, and I, as of now, have not published it, although I may publish it before this one, where I was thinking about how it's impossible to sell used stuff. And what does that say about, you know, all this success? Well, um, and I just rewatched a video on Enron yesterday, and it occurs to me, maybe what's going on is that we are not able to track a bunch of things, and we don't really... We look like we are growing and the economy is great and, uh, you know, tons of people are employed, whatever. But then under the hood, basically everybody is living on a shoestring. I, I think that that's what's really going on is that everything looks pretty good on paper, but in practice, the, um, the foundation is sand and the house eventually has to collapse. And I'm concerned about this. If I ever wanted to buy a house, well, <laughs> funny enough, if I wanted to buy a house in Siler City, it would never happen unless I was willing to pay grossly inflated prices. And they're only inflated for now. At some point, this bubble, if you will, has to pop. At some point, all of this stuff that seems to be rising up um, all of these fronts that are colliding slowly, but that no one's really talking about or paying attention to in mainstream news especially, something's got to give. When you have people not buying used stuff, that means one of two things. Either people are doing really great and can buy new stuff instead, or people are doing really badly to the point that they can't even afford to buy used stuff that's not an absolute necessity. <sighs> I don't know what to say about this. It's just, it's so disturbing to me that there are all these things that seem like they're colliding. It's like watching a train wreck in slow motion. So, I don't have a solution to any of this. But the observation needs to be made, and maybe if you look around, you'll start to notice it too. Maybe you live in a 10,000-person town, and this 10,000-person town doesn't have enough housing. Maybe you've looked into getting a house, but you realize that for some reason, you couldn't ever actually win when you'd try to go get one. The amount of money that they wanted, well, suddenly it was under contract and gone before you could even throw in an offer. Maybe you've gone through this and wondered why. Well, perhaps the problem is that someone else is buying that up. Someone is buying that up quickly. Um, I, I swear to God, this is my honest opinion. I think we're heading into another real estate bubble. Um, if we're not already deeply into one. I think we're, there is a real estate bubble that's going to make 2008 look like a joke. And several of you that are watching this may have been too young in the 2000s to really appreciate the uh, recession of 2008. But remember when I said something about financial markets earlier? Well, here's the interesting thing about it. Too big to fail. If you weren't around or you weren't paying attention during the recession, look up too big to fail banks. The banks doing, you know, feeding into real estate speculation caused the housing bubble that caused the recession of 2008 that wrecked the economy for several years. Several years! Um, the, and the banks that were responsible for it, rather than being allowed to go bankrupt, the government literally said, like on television, people in the government literally said that these banks were too big to fail and they were given money 
to keep them from failing. The banks that caused the recession were kept from failing by the United States government. The government that is supposed to be operating in the best interests of the people. They operated in the interests of the multinational banking moneylenders rather than the citizens of the United States. And that's why I say, if you, if you look, now we've got globalism, we've got all of these foreign nationals buying up property, we've got all of this real estate being bought up by people who are going to rent it later, or even not rent it in some cases, um, not people who are going to live there, you know. There, and the growth isn't stopping as far as the jobs. So at some point, all this real estate speculation is going to blow. Because people can't afford it when there's not enough housing like this. It, it's a little overwhelming, and that's the note on which I will leave you. So if you're interested in these subjects, look them up. There's no shortage of videos on YouTube about them. And uh, I think that you'll be both very interested and rather shocked at what you learn. Anyway, have a wonderful day. And uh, I'm going to step outside and get a free shower. Take care.